And good morning to all who are here from here, there, and everywhere. We welcome you to St. Peter's Evangelical Lutheran Church, Borough of Brooklyn, City of New York. That's our official name. It's on all of our documents. And we're in the loveliest neighborhood in Brooklyn, Cypress Hills section. Happy to be here with you this morning. Um, Dave Benke, pastor here for many, 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 many years. And uh, we're glad to welcome you on a Combination Sunday, which is the Sunday of the Reformation. We'll sing a couple songs that honor that. And Lutheran Women's Missionary League Sunday. Women of God on the move. And the women of God will be on the move up here today to talk, to uh, encourage us, and to give us some lessons for life. So I'm going to, you know, I'm having trouble with my glasses here. Very foggy, very foggy. I'm ready to go. I don't need these glasses anyway. I don't need these glasses. Uh, all right. Let, let me start all over and then we'll start. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. I knew you'd say it that way. Welcome to St. Peter's. Uh, you will see on your bulletins, those of you that have one that's handed out, this beautiful, uh, this beautiful artistic portrayal of women in prayer. And really that's what our women do at this church. Our women are in prayer a lot. And this is a, a beautiful uh, portrait from uh, Africa. So you can see women of, women of God in prayer from all over the world. And we're doing that today. So our first song, our first... Uh, First thing to do is to thank those who serve. We do that every week at St. Peter's. We thank God for those who serve. So please rise and join me in that round of applause. Thank God for those who are serving others, for those who care for others, for those who work in our hospitals and places of primary care, for those who counsel, for those who teach, for those who are, are caring for others right here in our midst this morning, and, for, and those who serve and protect. For all these wonderful people, uh, we thank God and we do so right now. One, two, three. Yes. Amen. I felt good. We're going to then continue with a song. The first song is, oh, easy. Sunshine in my soul today and out on the, on the porch as well. A lot of sunshine in the air. Here we go. Son 
beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. As we prepare to go through the confession of sins, we're going to sing this song, Hide Me in Your Holiness. together I a poor miserable sinner confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have offended you and for which I justly deserve your punishment but I am sorry for them and repent of them and pray you your boundless mercy for the sake of the suffering and death of your son Jesus Christ be gracious and merciful to me a poor sinful being forgive my sins give me your Holy Spirit for the amendment of my sinful life and bring me to life everlasting. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given for to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of his word, I announce to you the full and free forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this is a Reformation Sunday. What good would it be if we didn't sing A Mighty Fortress? A mighty fortress is our God. And Castillo Fuerte, for those of you who would like to sing it in Spanish. Here we go. A little Caribbean version. This is Martin Luther in Jamaica. Craft that. 
Together the prayer of the day. Lord, keep us strong in your word. Keep us alive by the power of your Holy Spirit. Grant us healing in the name of Jesus and give us the joy to keep on telling the world that God is love wherever we are and whenever we can. Amen. You may have a seat and we continue now with our lessons. I'll try to set the mic up here appropriately. Good morning, church family. Okay, the first lesson reading comes from the book of Psalms. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silent, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy on me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then, acknowledged, then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to you, the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayer to you. At a time of distress, the rush of mighty water shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we continue with our second lesson. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 
The second lesson comes from 2 Thessalonians, begin at the first chapter, first verse. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, and God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must always give thanks to God, brothers and sisters, as it is right, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith during all your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. To this end, we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith, so that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of, of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's see. Is Ileana here? Would you like to take this second lesson? I'm not seeing, unless Amali is here. My glasses are failing me today. Ileana will come forward and give us that second lesson in Espanol. Happy Sunday! <laughs> All right, so the second lecture will be taken from Lucas. Lucas, capítulo 19, 1, uh, perdón, Hola, segunda de Thessalonicenses. That's the one. Capítulo 1, versos 1 al 4 y 11 al 12. Pablo, Silvano y Timoteo, a la iglesia de los Thessalonicenses, Unida a Dios, nuestro Padre, y al Señor Jesucristo. Que Dios, el Padre y el Señor Jesucristo, les concedan gracia y paz. Hermanos, siempre debemos dar gracias a Dios por ustedes, como es justo, porque su fe se acrecienta cada vez más, y en cada uno de ustedes sigue abundando el amor hacia los otros. Así que nos sentimos orgullosos de ustedes ante las iglesias de Dios por la perseverancia y la fe que muestran al soportar toda clase de persecuciones y sufrimientos. Por eso, oramos constantemente por ustedes, para que nuestro Dios los considere dignos del llamamiento que les ha hecho, y por su poder, perfeccione toda disposición al bien y toda obra que realicen por la fe. Oramos así, de modo que el nombre de nuestro Señor Jesús sea glorificado por medio de ustedes y ustedes por él, conforme a la gracia de nuestro Dios y del Señor Jesucristo. Esta es palabra de Dios. Te alabamos, Señor. Muchísimas gracias. Ok. We're going to ask Sevi to come forward at this moment and grace us with a special selection on this Sunday. Good morning. My song is entitled, Is Your All on the Altar? Sleep for friendly prayer. 
Thank you, Sevi. Always singing from the heart to the Lord with praise and thanksgiving. We're going to ask all to rise now to hear the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel for this Reformation Sunday is written in St. Luke, chapter 19. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see Jesus because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up, said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down. I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He's gone to be the guest of someone who's a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything... I will pay them back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man is come to seek and save the lost. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Amen. Amen. As you sit down, we're going to ask the kids to stand up. Those who are here, those who may be waiting somewhere else. I see Cynthia and Uziel, and I see, of course, these two beautiful girls and Sarah. And we're going to come on up and then out. I'm going to put. I'm going to meet, meet you halfway. Ba 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 Come on, dude. So today, morning. Hi, hi, buddy. Here we go. Yes, five, uh, thank you. Today they're going to march out and they're going to move over to the parish hall. Normally other people come late, as you know, although they were here early. And then we're going to study about somebody, so I'm going to ask you to say this name already. And this is the name I want you to say. Okay, I'll see if you can do it. Z oh, and you too. The name of this guy is Zacchaeus. Can you say Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus. 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 Very good. Sounded a lot like your name there. It's good. So we're going to learn about somebody in the Bible, and he had a certain reality that you all have. 
You find yourself to be short or tall? Who said short? Somebody else said short. <laughs> I don't know that you get to answer for them now. Are you short or tall? Short or tall? Nobody wants to admit that they're short. I'll tell you that much. Anyway, we're going to talk about all that and ask, what does God, how does God reach us? How does God touch you? How does God talk to you? And that's our Sunday school lesson. Go and do it. Go and enjoy. It's a beautiful thing. Give him a, 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 a parting hand. So on this special day, we are... What happened to the... Uh, we have no... We have no uh, oh, there it is. Okay, it's going back. We have the privilege of introducing to you our very own Janine Bowling, Deaconess Bowling, who will tell you exactly what she's going to present to you this morning. Okay? Let's give her a welcome. One, two, three. Good morning, everybody. I'm trying not to mix up my mask so I don't catch a disease on the way out of here, you know? Um, what I wanted to talk to with everyone about today, as you know, it's LWML Sunday today, um, but something that you may not know is something that the LWML put out as a project with Concordia Publishing House, which is a publishing house for our church body, um, and this is called Words of Peace and Protection. And so um, it's 52 different devotionals, all written by women from across uh, the Lutheran church. Some of them from here, some of them from close by to us, some of them from far away from us. But I wanted to share with you some of the devotions that were in here today. Um, and then I was going to end with the devotion that I wrote in here um, that actually is about our experience during the last two years. So please pray with me before we get started. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we have together. We thank you for all the different women around the world, but especially for the women in our congregation. Um, we ask a special blessing upon them today and extend that blessing over to the families, um, those husbands, those spouses, those children, um, all who are involved in the families and the relationships that you have given us here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, so one of the things that was important to talk about for uh, Women's Sunday has to be um, what it means to be a woman and how it relates to the family of God. Um, so when we think about what it means to be a woman, this is something that's come up in our country a lot, basically in the last year. Uh, our new Supreme Court Justice, right, uh, Justice Ketanji Brown, went through this in, in, her, um, in her review of getting into to be in the highest court in the United States, right? And some of the things that we get from the Bible tell us a lot about what it means to be a woman. Um, and then extending outside of the Bible how women fit into the rest of our life in society and in our families, right? Um, so I wanted to share with you from, from Genesis that it has two things in it that are really important, and those two things are what we hold on to. First, um, from Genesis 127, is that God created us on purpose, and when he created us, he said it was good. And so those are two really important things to remember, um, because with us being here on purpose, um, especially in our world, we know that we're here for a reason, and that we're here not just for a season, but for a lifetime with the people who are placed around us. And then the second piece about being good is that um, this is something that we need to share with others. So needless to say, outside of the Bible, lots of people have tried to explain what it means to be a woman, um, but probably one of my favorite quotes surrounding it come from a 20th century urban philosopher, Lassane Parrish Crooks, who you may know better as Tupac Shakur. So he puts it as this in his song, uh, Keep Your Head Up. Since we all came from a woman, got our name from a woman, and our game from a woman, I wonder why we take from our women, we rape our women, we hate our women. I think it's time that we be real for our women, try to heal our women, because if we don't, we'll have a race of babies that will hate the ladies who make the babies. And so this is from a long time ago, right now. The kids call it throwbacks now. I found out this week. I'm officially a throwback on Throwback Thursday. But um, with this, what we share here, um, he's sharing in this song, and really throughout the, throughout the rest of the song, is that women face very specific struggles. We know that as brothers and sisters in the family of God that we're called in Galatians 6, chapter 2, to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. 
And so when we really start thinking about the, the battles or the issues that women face, what we're really thinking of is the battles that we all face because we share one another's burdens and that's how we fulfill God's, God's law, right, here on earth. So I wanted to share with you first from uh, the, the prelude, right? And so Donna Snow, um, if you ever go to a, a national LWML event, you'll probably see Donna Snow in person. If you never go, then you heard her words at St. Peter's Lutheran Church on Sunday, October 30th, right? Um, but I'm going to share with you just her introduction, okay? The Soldier's Psalm, and this is based off of Psalm 91. She can almost reach the left side of her head to brush her hair properly, but not quite. She stares in amazement at the nasty cut on her right pinky toe. She never felt it. A year has passed since her head-on car collision. Initially paralyzed after hitting the windshield, her mobility and the nerve endings in her arms and legs have slowly returned. But not all of them. Each day is a blessing and a battle. Whether internal or external, combat is something you and I both understand. The battles rage over sins that entangle, opinions that clash, jobs that end, relationships that struggle, addictions that linger, health that declines, but take heart, fellow soldier. Psalm 91 is sometimes called the soldier psalm. As Christ followers, we understand daily warfare on the spiritual battlefield, both large and small. Some days we shout for joy when God brings victory, like when my sister did not die in that car accident. Other days, exhaustion settles in, and we wonder if we have the strength to endure, like one more day at physical therapy. And so this is just the beginning that she shared, but what we're looking through here is really what soldiers go through in battle. And the reason that um, we have Psalm 91 in the Bible is to remember that though we're not soldiers in a literal battle of war, we do still have a battlefield that we fight on, right? And that battlefield is our daily life. So last Tuesday, um, if you tried to reach me, it was impossible because I did the most adult thing ever. Um, I went to the, the witness luncheon and then we took a bunch of kids with us from our savior, had to get the kids home, um, had to get them back to school. I made plans with a friend for dinner that night, but at 7.30, where was I? I was sleeping on the couch till 4 a.m. <laughs> so I went home, slept on the couch, went from the couch to the bed. It's just become a daily routine. But really what that daily routine defines is kind of the sense of exhaustion, right? Has anybody else been feeling exhausted as things start, start up again, right? And we're back in full swing. So exhaustion. Um, we wonder where our strength comes from when we feel those times. But as you uh, think about yourself as a soldier, I want you to take a moment and close your eyes to imagine. I find it's helpful to imagine when I close my eyes. Um, what is the battle that you're going through at this moment? So perhaps for some of us, it is finances. Um, a lot of times it can seem like there's more month than money, right? Dollar Tree reminds us of the holidays that are coming up again and again and again. First it's Halloween, then it's Thanksgiving, then it's Christmas, then it's money, then it's money, then it's money, then it's money, right? So um, maybe you're having troubles with finances. Maybe that's your battle. Perhaps your battle night now is at work. You have a supervisor who won't start nagging you. Or you have emails that should be meetings and meetings that should be emails. Um, they have hours that they won't give you. Coming in every day, you have to put up with the same people, overworked, underpaid, or misunderstood, maybe unheard. Perhaps your battle is with health. Um, you have maybe you're waiting on results that keep coming back positive or negative. Uh, you're trying to get better, um, but your old habits are bringing you back. You have a bank account that racks up, right? Every time, especially with healthcare in America, you get healthier, but then you have a bill, right? Um, so maybe some of these things are things you can relate to. But as we think through all of those different battles, um, even battles with those that are most closest to us, right? Those battles that we go through in relationships, friends, um, shifting gears, um, people being rearranged, significant others, husbands, wives, kids, they work the last nerve, right? So you really start to question a little bit when you're going through all these things, whether it's health, finance, work, friends, relationships, all of these times get together and sometimes it feels like it happens all at once and you may begin to ask yourself, God, 
where are you, right? Where are you in all of this? We have all this stuff going on. You say in the Bible this, we come to the church, we hear that, right? And then we live our week and we say, God, where are you at? Sometimes the question we're asking of God, where are you? It should be instead, God, why are you, right? God, why are you doing this? And when we think of the why instead of the where, right? Because we look around and, and we don't see. That's the reality, right? We look around and we don't see. But when we think of why, why are you doing this? This is when we get to some of those cliche statements, right? And we've heard them before. What does God do for his toughest soldiers? Test them, right? He gives, he gives his toughest battles to his toughest soldiers. And you're like, I'm good, God. I'm really good. It's okay. I understand, right? That's not necessarily in the Bible. But I did want to share with you something that is in Scripture um, that we learn from Scripture. What we learn is not that God only gives his toughest battles to his toughest soldiers, is, but really we learn that God gives battles to everyone. God gives battles to everyone to show us two specific things. The first is that in our time of trouble, we meet our human weakness, right? And in our time of trouble, we find out we don't really have enough to deal with it. And in that time of trouble is when we get to see the promises of Christ exceeded and fulfilled. Paul said it first. If you know Paul in the Bible, he went through a significant amount of struggles in his life. If you haven't read about him, please do. But one of the things that Paul says is that when he is weak, he is strong. And this is because of one thing only, and that's the power of God made perfect in his weakness. And so when we look at Psalm 91, um, like I shared with you a little earlier, this book is all about different, um, different views of Psalm 91, really. We see that the Messiah is the one who brings over God's rest on the battlefield. Because oftentimes on the battlefield, you may need reinforcements. You need people to come in behind and strengthen everything that's going on. And those battles happen in our lives, too. And does God send those reinforcements? Yes? No? Maybe so? Yes, right? God sends those reinforcements, and God sends those reinforcements in a lot of different ways. Um, one of the ways is with the community that we share, right, here at church. Another way can be with those people who maybe are not here in front of us, but they call us, right? Sometimes you're that reinforcement for someone else who's out there who's going through something different. But more than anything, the biggest reinforcement that God brings to us is in Jesus Christ as the Messiah who comes following up to that promise of being there always for us and with us. And so when we think about what it means to be on a battlefield, um, to have to fight alongside of God, we think about a renewal. And the renewal comes first in the mind, right? The renewal comes first in the mind as we think about what it means to go through these battles each and every day. You guys remember, uh, it used to be in cartoons a lot, if you're a TikToker, maybe not. They, it's also on there. But there's like a little, there's two people on your shoulder. Who's on the first shoulder? Angel, right? And who's on the other shoulder? The devil, right? And so you have these two different things. This is not, it's not biblical, but it's something that we, we kind of war with, right? Because we have the good thing we could do, and we always have the bad thing we can do. We have our old self all the time, and we have our new self. We have what would Jesus do, and then we have what would Janine do, right? Every single time when we're making a decision. But with those two things, we remember that God has prepared us to fully rely on him. And so when we have those moments of weakness, when we have those ends of the rope, when we're at our last nerve, we remember who God is. Writing the devotional, um, one of the things I read earlier was that it happened at a unique time in history, right? Um, it was during a shelter in place, and in sheltering in place, we learned how to wait. And one of the things that I've learned in my life about how to wait to share with you is that if you ask God for patience, what does he give you? opportunities to practice patience, okay? He, give, he, doesn't, he doesn't just give you patience out of nowhere, right? He gives you instead opportunities, people, situations to practice patience with. And so when God is preparing us to rely on him, which is something that's at work all the time in our lives, our question is, when we're holding on to those battles, are there pieces of it that we are not giving over to God, right? And so our actions may say something different than our words, 
right? God, I trust you with the budget, but let me handle the rent. God, I trust you with my sons, but let me take care of my daughter. God, I trust you with what you're going to do with my mother, but let me worry about the exact place, right? We hold on to little pieces of the battle, almost as if um, we're telling God that we can handle it better than him. And so one of the things that when we talk about the renewal of the mind has to do with understanding how to trust God and getting into the practice of um, those situations that he sends us to be patient and to grow. So do our actions communicate um, about the faith that God has given us? And that was really something that we had to think through in times of isolation, of course, but also in times when we're ramping up again, right? So as our actions out in the world, what does that say about our faith? The gift of faith that God has given us, how does it influence our actions? Those are two things that we're always um, thinking back, right? And sometimes we receive the blessing from God, what we prayed for, the answer to that prayer, and then we go right back to the same thing, right? God, thank you for healing me. I'm going to keep smoking. God, thank you for healing me. I'm not going to check my blood sugar until the next time I faint, right? And so when we do those things, we understand that we are needing reinforcement, right? We're needing reinforcement in the battle, and the only way to get reinforcement is to go where? Back to the cross, right? Back to God, back to whether it's communion, coming here to church on Sunday, getting a word by yourself, right? Um, we read the Bible on our own. We have um, Christian friends and family who we can go to. But always we're turning back, turning back, turning back to God. What we find that at the end of every battle, every war, it's a particular group of people who write the history. Who are those people who write history? The winners, right? The victors write the history. And so when we look at um, our text, right, when we look at a text of the Bible, specifically today I'm talking about Psalm 91, but any of the texts that we read, right, earlier, um, what Twyla read, uh, what Ileana read, um, what Sevi sang, right, all of these different things are the words of the Lord out in our midst to take home, to remember, and to use. And so at the end of every battle, there is a winner, and a loser, and the winner is usually the one who writes stuff down. And thanks be to God that the people who wrote things down in the Bible for us were victorious in Christ. So I wanted to share, um, to close really, is the devotion that I, that I wrote. It was a share about moving, all right? Has anybody moved this year? Moved? Locations? Houses? Apartments? No? No movers in the room? Okay, y'all are lucky. Moving is stressful. Um, but one of the things that we went through with moving, um, I wanted to share with you for Psalm 91, um, because this really talks about the God who remains after the battle gets tough. So how many times have you moved in your life? The average American moves 11 times. For me, that number is 17. Each, num each time I move, whether it's where I live or where I work, I do learn something new. And 17, this is all of life, not as an adult, right? Um, at Our Savior Lutheran in the Bronx, we moved teaching in office spaces twice during the summer due to contract changes and a natural disaster. So if you guys remember Hurricane Ida from a couple of years ago, that was what we were dealing with last year um, at the school. Both moves happened with short notice and both were mentally and physically stressful. It took a lot of work to remember that God was beside us and guiding us. Moving is stressful. And when you do it alone, the packing, lifting, shifting, organizing, and getting settled sometimes seems insurmountable. Worry some questions pop into your head. Will this place ever feel right to me? Will I fit in with my neighborhood? Did I make a huge deposit somewhere that I won't have peace? Moving can also cause you to wonder what home really is. In Psalm 91.9, we see that you have made the Lord your dwelling place. This is a powerful reminder for the God who remains besides us, fighting evil and calamity on our behalf. In a world that feels dangerous and uncertain, he is our dwelling place. In a city that feels lonely, he is by our side. And so that's just a portion of that but because it really relates to what we're talking about, right? If we're on the battlefield and we need reinforcement, we call on God, right? When we're inside of the battle and we wonder why we're in it, we remember um, not only that God gives his battles to his toughest soldiers, but rather that God is beside us through everything. God gives us battles to help us to understand who he is and how much he can help us. Um, it's a very difficult lesson to learn at the time, 
But once you start practicing it, because a lot of what spirituality is is practice, right? Um, we start to learn different things about it. And so from Malachi 6 and, thir and uh, Hebrews 13, 8, I'd just like to um, close our, our devotional thought with those two. So as for the God who remains, Malachi 3, verse 6, says, I am the Lord, I change not, therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. And then finally in Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. So when we start to question God's character, when we start to question God's location, when we start to question even sometimes God's commitment, we recognize that scripture is written by the victors, and um, in that victorious writing, he has told us who he is, why he is, where he is, and how much he's going to be beside us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So that was super, and uh, it is wonderful to hear from women in our church. I'm going to say that Janine is child of St. Peter's, a child of this part of the world, a child of Martin Luther High School, uh, yes, child of Concordia College in River Forest, CUC, I'm sorry, in uh, Chicago, also the executive director of school at Our Savior Lutheran in the Bronx, and they're all over it up there, and a deaconess of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, and... Uh, involved with Lutherans for Racial Justice. All of those things, but all they say is, this is Janine, thank God. Amen. 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 Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, so I have to cover, this is what we do in, in our church, but I have to cover for a second. Uh, and, and this is the way it works. I'm going to just say a word or two, because Janine kind of said it all, right? You got the message? You got the point? Yes, I think we got the point. And we're good. So this is what I'm going to talk about for just three minutes. Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayer to you. At a time of distress, the rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. Ten years ago this weekend, the rush of mighty waters was out there all the way. And uh, I'm thinking now of our church and how we responded to that, and I'm thinking about a person who I'm going to reference in a minute. So St. Peter's got involved, and we found out that Janine not only was among us here at this church, but also her folks were living in Far Rockaway at that time. And she had house, she had stuff there, which was all being messed with. And within a ma matter of what, Clara, two days, a day, we began to make this place over there, this sanctuary and this parish hall, a house of healing for that part of the world. So we go out there a couple days afterwards, and I'm with uh, Clara and uh, a guy named, uh, what was his, Rodolfo. Right, and we, we go out there and we're doing our thing and we're about done with our thing and Clara uh, says well we can go to this one more place I said well but we did it we've done we've done what we came to do I'm pooped and, and she said no this woman is right here and we walk up to the woman and, and she starts talking to her and I walk over and finally I said well uh, she said, why are you here? She said, here's what happened. The, the fish from the bay side and the fish from the beach side, you understand this is between, this is a peninsula, so there's water here and water here. And the two fish from both sides were in her basement. Yes, because this thing came all the way 10 feet up into her house above the basement. And she was out there cleaning, right? And, and Janine was right there, 60, Beach 67th. Um, and, and so she said, where, where are you from? Why are you here? And I said, well, and Clara said, well, we're Lutheran. And the woman says, you're Lutheran? I'm Lutheran. The woman says, I'm Lutheran. So I'm standing there, I said, you're Lutheran? I, and she said, uh, which kind of Lutheran are you? You know? 
Yes. So I said, well, I'm, I'm, and Clara, I think you said this. She said, she said, he's the bishop of the Lutherans. And she said, well, I only know one bishop of the Lutherans. It's Bishop Benke. <laughs> and, right? Is this accurate? Pretty good. Uh, uh, and I said, I'm Bishop Benke. Where are you from? Who are you? What? What? And uh, her name was Barbara Taylor Burnett. And Barbara Taylor Burnett is one of my great all-time heroes, okay? So she stuck it out there. We, we talked and we got in touch. And it turns out that Barbara Taylor Burnett is a member of St. John the Evangelist down in Williamsburg, right? So Barbara uh, is a New York City police detective. And Barbara Taylor Burnett uh, gave up her life, basically, in the results of September 11th as she was down there constantly for week upon week upon week and it, it got right into her lungs. It went right into her lungs so that she had uh, cancer of the lung, she had all kind of things going on and she never wavered and she just kept after it. So finally down the line when Lutheran Disaster Response in New York was organizing to get money for the victims of 9-11 who suffered from all those diseases the New York City Police Department, NYPD, sent one person down to testify before Congress. You know who it was? Barbara Taylor Burnett. And her testimony influenced the entire Congress to pass that legislation that we know as the Zadroga Act. So Barbara Taylor Burnett lived out her life until this last year, passed away of that same thing, with great joy in her heart the whole time. And just two weeks ago, last, what, last week, the uh, NYPD and the neighborhood dedicated the street in front of St. John the Evangelist as Barbara Taylor Burnett Way. So if you want to talk today about women who make a difference, uh, Janine is really making a difference in the Bronx. Do you know that? Really, really making a difference. Barbara Taylor Burnett made a difference, not just for herself, same as Janine, but for the sake of the one she serves. And she produced justice and equity and, and, and a new day and a new dawn for many, many people. May we all be blessed in exactly that same way, that when the water rises and it comes over your house, you understand that your house is built upon the rock, and the rock is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, that was just my cover. Uh, now, we're going to, now we're going to continue, and I believe we're going to continue with... I don't have to believe. I can see it on the wall. The hymn of the day, Serve the Lord with Gladness. Ready to rise and sing? Let's do so. And this is sung to what tune? Come on. Onward, Christian soldiers, right off the message we just heard. German.
served the Lord with gladness. He gave us command to proclaim His gospel now in every land. Fellow sinners, may like us be blessed. confess together our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the prayers of the people of God. We start with the prayers that are here, and then we'll add those from online sources as well as for as yours. Uh, let's see. Who stole my pen? Let me have that pen. Pen, right there. There we go. Stephen stole my pen, <laughs> but he gave it back. Uh, we're going to ask first of all for those who are are uh, mourning the loss of loved ones today. From Elmer, for Royston and Lattie, both of whom died in this past week. Both of whom are family members. Funeral tomorrow? You're going? Cremated tomorrow, I'm sorry. Okay. So, for your family, uh, Elmer, uh, enormous family, but you've been going through a lot of death in that family, so God be with you. Uh, a year ago, Robert passed away. Who's put that prayer in? Oh, that's from uh, Brenda. For Ro- yeah, Robert was one year ago. Wow. For Chris and Hyacinth, that's from uh, Stanley Sobrian. He's been going through all of that. Uh, and Kenneth and Eunice. Did anything happen this week, Stan?
Your dad's brothers. Did anything happen with uh, Chris? Daughter's birthday. But what about the case? Tomorrow. Okay. So we'll we'll pray for that as well. Okay. Oh, for the headstone. Yeah. Okay. For Lillian's brother Armando. Uh, and then for uh, Joycelyn from Mohan. All our prayers for th those who have passed away. And then for Anne and husband with illness, jo Jeanette and uh, Charles. For Norman and Rashawn and John Crane. For Marie Cristello. For Andrew Ryan. For the Don Raj family. All over the place. Canada, uh, Curacao, or, and other locations. For Terence Mohabir. All for healing. And then for uh, Sevi, George, Elvis, the kids, Sonia and family for, for uh, guidance. For Yvonne and Francis, uh, the guidance for the Towler and Bascom families, for Nasser. For Brenda and family, Gloria and family, Cookie and family, Valerie and family, Anna Fung, Camille Fung, and the whole Fung crew. For guidance for the Isley and Ryan families. For John and his family, for Stanley and family, Jeff and Julie and their family, for Leela and family, Eileen Gray and her family, for uh, Maria and her family, Ileana, Joanne and Keith on the road again, for guidance for the Llewellyn and Paul families. And then we have for the Kemp family, LeBron, the uh, LeBron and Crossland families, Jolanda Paredes, for uh, Jaime Joy, for the Sanseran family, safe travel for Mike. I bet Mike's at the World Series. I bet he's at the World Series in the dugout. And I hope that he's in the right dugout. I'm afraid he went with the Phillies. That would be very bad. But I bet he's in the Astros dugout. For Diane Cox and her family, know them very well. For safe travel for Keith. And then we have birthdays, Jamir's birthday coming up this week later. For Sevi's birthday next Sunday, Sevi's going to Guyana this week, correct? And is going to be giving away food, giving food for 100 kids while she's down there. So let's give her traveling prayers there. For Chris's daughter, Felon, second birthday, and Gerald Holder is going to be 93 this week. Nine to three. Nine to three. What else am I missing? Judy, what am I missing? Carol, Barry, and Norman. My sister went down with her husband to meet my brother in Arkansas, and they both got COVID down there. Yes, you know, the brother whose house was burned down, so it was a lovely... They had to stay an extra 11 days, all in separate rooms. <laughs> That's the way it works. And, and lest I forget, for Annette Fanara, who is also suffering now from COVID the second time, sits right here, not today. She's home watching us from there. And for her husband, Joe, Joe, Joe who's suffered an injury, and we're praying that that injury will heal quickly. Uh, Jackie? Louise Anderson down in Florida. And Wendy, who's such a strong woman of faith. Yeah, Wendy Adams. Wow. I, I don't want to say how many, but maybe. Is it 20? 19. Oh, good. She's far. She's only a teenager. Yeah. That makes me feel better. I'm looking through the pictures for the anniversary, and of course they're all this tall. So, all right, Twyla. Claire, give her a big hug. Claire, wonderful. Okay, it's Henry. Uh, for, uh, 
You're pointing directly at the, she, he has his finger over the top of your head. Marvin's out of the hospital, beautiful. David, is God being good to you? All the time, through it all, amen. And what are the next steps? Getting there. Getting there. Well, I mean, what happens? You just keep getting more treatments or more advice as to what kind of treatments. Eh? Amen. But to see these two back in church, isn't that a beautiful thing? Amen. Yes. It's a wonderful, wonderful assembly. So are we ready to pray? Now, Elmer. Which one? Josiah. Josiah. Chrisiah? Yeah. And she got to be in her 20s, though. Right? 22. Yeah. Chrisiah. And may her next birthday go backwards so they get younger. Uh, Audrey. Susan, Karen, your family, and all ushers. I got it. It's all there. Okay, let's, let's pray. Father in heaven, we give you such great thanks today for this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for women, faithful women who serve you. Thank you for uh, all of the fellowship of the faithful here today who have gathered in your name. We also pray a prayer of thanks today that you are so good to us in so many ways. And we think of all the prayers for healing that are being answered, for all the prayers for justice that are being answered, and for all of the prayers for ourselves and our, our neighbors that are being answered because of your divine graciousness and mercy toward us. We bless your name, Father, Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those mourning the loss of loved ones with a long list today. And we ask that where we have felt that loss and felt the sting of that loss, that you might heal us through the one who said, I am the resurrection and the life and made good on that promise. Lord, in your mercy. For those sick and suffering in any way, as we've named this wonderful list today before you, that we want to bring before you, especially for healing, whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, or emotional. For all these many needs, Father, we ask that your healing hand might be upon them, that you would send the great physician, our Lord Jesus, into their hearts and lives to guide and to keep all those in the medical professions and the healing professions who are working with them, but also to give them the peace of heart, mind, and spirit as they work through difficult problems in life. Bless them, Father, and heal them, Lord, in your mercy. We pray prayers of thanksgiving for the gift of life. What a wonderful thing. And as though we think about those folks celebrating birthdays this week, we ask that as you have given them that blessing in their journey thus far, you might take them another year by God's grace and give them so many more opportunities that all they can do every morning is wake and thank you. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our church, Father, that it might be a beacon of light here in Cypress Hills and a beacon of light to all who attend. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you would bless our church and school. That outreach means so much to us, Father, and we ask that we might be a church that's in the community for the community in, in many, many different ways. Bless our church, Lord, in your mercy. We pray now, Father, for the world, a world in tumult, a world in trouble, a world in turning that needs to turn to you. And as we prepare for elections in just a couple of weeks, we ask that you would bring about wisdom and discernment in the process of electing leaders, not only across our area here of New York, but also throughout this country. A guide and keep all leaders strong in your wisdom for your kingdom's sake. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to bring our offerings now, and as we do so, we're going to pray. Start right away with the song, In the Garden. As the offerings are finally brought forward, you may then rise to conclude the song.
speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet. And the melody that he gave to me For you have had mercy on us and given your only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts that he may establish in us a living faith and prepare us joyfully to remember our Redeemer and receive him who comes to us in his body and blood. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also after supper he took the cup. When he had given thanks he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And you may join hands as you will, across the aisle, in the aisle, family members only, whatever you want to do. We sing our song of unity. This is a song of unity for a couple thousand years. It's called the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer. <laughs>
the peace of the Lord be with you all. Share that in every appropriate way you can, right there. As you finish sharing the peace, you then may have a seat and we'll prepare for Holy Communion. As we continue with this portion of our service, we remind you that we do it this way, St. Peter, since the virus. You come forward uh, here, this side first, this side second. Receive a little blessing from me as an individual or as a family unit. And then uh, receive the communion, receive the body and blood of Christ. But take it back to your pew, hold it, sing along, watch, pray. And then we will all receive the, the communion together at the end. And I will say those words, take and eat. Okay? Uh, we have two songs, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior, and something else. Holy, holy. Holy, holy. Okay. Come, for the feast is prepared.
hearts. May your lives be a mirror of health and healing for yourselves and others in Jesus' name. Thank you. And you send us in the name of the Father, the Holy Spirit, and the Son of the Holy Jesus' name. Two ways for you. Bury the power and the peace of God and justice and righteousness and in service to you each and every one. Amen. Oh boy. Eddie, may you and Vilma be blessed to be a blessing. Did someone take one back from that? Did someone take one of these back? Why don't you take this back? Yeah. So you take one and Jose will take the other one. I know, we, we, we got it covered. Thank you, Audrey. Jesus loves you every day. Amen. Take the one for the moment as well. In the name of the Father, Hijo and Espíritu Santo, poder y esfuerza en su santo nombre, en cada sus obras, en la familia, en la iglesia, y en su vida. Amen. And there's a, sing a symbol there because we had exactly the amount of these. Exact. Take and eat. The body of Christ is given for you. Take and drink. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus keep you strong in the true faith unto eternal life. Depart in the peace of God. Amen. Congregation, please rise. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in love and kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but to always rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Receive now the benediction of Almighty God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we ask for a blessing upon the food we're about to eat in the parish hall. May it be to your glory and to our good. And may there be... a place on a plate for someone who does not have to eat as well from our bounty. In Jesus' name, amen. You may have a seat. You see how I did that? I, I did not wait for somebody to tell me, you didn't pray for the food. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, a couple of announcements, and, and uh, then we're going to have the LWML come up here and give us a blessing at the end. Uh, first thing is to say... Uh, thanks to be to God for all the women of the church today. All the men, give a hand to the women of the church today. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you. I see some of the women were clapping for themselves. It just doesn't... It's kind of, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'm in favor of that. No, that's okay. It's okay. Uh, and thanks for fellowship today, which is sponsored, of course, by... Uh, Brenda and the LWML and June, I believe, kicked in on this one. We got, we got stuff over there. What do we have? Bagels in Danish. Pound cake. So it's all about health food. It's all about health food today. Okay. It's a perfect New York City 
Okay, celebration. Thank you both and all. Uh, Sunday school, you want to have a special presentation? Yes, you do? Let's, let's bring them up. As they're coming up, I'm going to keep talking so I don't mess up. Uh, Wednesday Bible study every Wednesday, 7 o'clock here. Come on by. Thanks to the... Oh, I want you to make sure that you take a sheet today, fill it out before you walk out this building for who to remember next Sunday in All Saints Day. All Saints Sunday. You know, we do it on a Sunday. Hold on, honey. I got, I'll, I'll get you in a minute. Don't, did they give those sheets out? Where are those sheets? Are they in the bulletins? No, exactly. Where are those sheets of paper? I'm saying, are they, where are they? That's what I'm asking. Where are they? Are they back there or up here? Where? I, I see the sheets of paper. Are there any? Do they have them? Distribute them now, yes. Because before you leave, you should be letting us know who you want to pray for on All Saints Sunday, which is next week. Uncle Walt, Mom, Dad, all of those things. Okay, just take one of those as well. Oh, good. I'm glad you're up here. Now, wait. We, first we give it to, to Sarah, and then she gives it to you. Here's the Sunday school, and Sarah. Good morning, everybody. So today in Sunday school, as we know, we had our gospel les lesson on Zacchaeus. Uh, we learned a little bit about him. We learned that he was a tax collector, and not a lot of people liked the tax collectors back in the day. What? Probably, probably still, you know. Um, so we learned that, was he tall or was he short? Short. Short. Yes, he was short. And he wanted to Good see answer. Jesus, so he climbed up what? A tree. Mm -hmm. Yes, he climbed up a Not sycamore yet. tree later, later. because he wanted to see Jesus. He kind of wanted to be a part of what Jesus was about. And eventually he changed his ways. So with the help of Mr. Stephen, we were able to learn the song, Zacchaeus was a wee little man. So we want to perform that for you. She can, okay, just sing into the mic. I'll hold the mic. One. Two, two, three. Man and a wee. Man and a wee. Man and a wee. Man and a I kicked in on the last word today. Where's what happened to Sarah? Oh, there you are. No, we can't do that. Yes. Nice job, Sarah. I thought you led the singing. Were you singing? Yeah. Well, I heard her. Yeah, yeah. We all did really good at the singing. And she said something we wanted to do. They wanted to sing, these kids. Children's choir. Children's choir. Okay. Children and okay. teen choir. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Wonderful job, as always. Uh, before we get to the... Uh, Clara? Clara, before we get to the LWML portion, let's do the anniversary portion early. Can you come back up here? And I want to introduce these two lovely gentlemen back. Yeah, we'll have that. We will have that. That's a friend. That was a friend of mine. Good morning. Good morning. Um, this is for the anniversary. Remember that we didn't have enough people. Now we have too many now. Ha! I'm just kidding. We have 225 plus. What? Yes. We have over 225 people coming to our anniversary. Yeah, we could take more, and those that haven't paid or anything, let me uh, see me today and let me know what's going on because the, the last day is the first. 
um, but everything is, is good and everything is, is really, really good. Thank you, thank you so much. How about the journal? The journal, if you want to take pictures, please. But I you have to pay for the pictures, of course, but too many people, how many people have sent? Not too many. Um, it's $25.50 and 100 For a page. For half a page, quarter of a page is $25.00. $50 for half. half, and the whole page is 100 I got to remember all that. Everything. So this is my fifth Sunday, and <laughs> repeating the same thing, but I just want to let you know, tomorrow is Monday, the guy will be here Tuesday, and that's it for, for the okay. journal. For the journal. You are can you take taking all the a, picture you want. Are you taking a picture of this lovely group yes, today? Yes, I've been asking every week to, um, that we're going to take pictures for all the group in St. Peter's. Including the women? Including the women and the choir and the ushers and so and so. But I only am able right. to take today for the Sunday school children. And? And the ladies. Thank you so much. All right. Any questions of Clara? I don't know where those 225 people came from, but most of them are Chanderdots, I think. <laughs> People bought tables and they're going to fill them up. So that's a good thing. Let's give Clara a big hand. That's a, not an easy thing. Not only, and we have people donating uh, to our special projects. We have altarware projects and we have a project that it was a new sanctuary door. That's needed. That, that has been out of whack there for a while. So those are the projects. I want to introduce these two lovely gentlemen who are sitting in row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. And you are here with Move the Money New York City Campaign. And where do we want to move that money? Boom. Away from war and toward the neighborhood. And they're going to be, so why don't we have you introduce yourselves and then we'll, you can greet everybody after church. So tell me, tell us. Tom. Right. And Tom and Roy are two wonderful, wonderful human beings, and they really work on the side of justice. And if you want to see these things happen, then we have to be about move the money. So thank you both. And after church, plenty of time to talk. And we have some handouts. You can give them out at the end as well. Beautiful. And now, women of St. Peter's. Would you like to come forward for one of your many moments in the sun? And it is sunny. Tom. Stay there, Vil Vilma. Is, you want Vilma up? She could stay. If she's happier staying, she could stay. I don't want her to fall. Want another mic? I can give you another mic, too. Okay. Okay.
we're going we're gonna to recite the pledge. Okay, we're going to recite the pledge on the count of three. One, two, three. In fervent gratitude for the Savior's dying love and his blood bought gift of redemption, we dedicate ourselves to him with all that we are and have, and in obedience to his call for workers in the harvest fields. We pledge him our willing service wherever and whenever he has need of us. We consecrate to our Savior our hands to work for him, our feet to go on his errands, our voice to sing his praises, our lips to proclaim his redeeming love, our silver and our gold to extend his kingdom, our will to do his will and every power of our life to the great task of bringing the lost and Aaron into fellowship with him. Amen. just want to remind everyone that we do collect mics and everyone will be given a mic box today along with a children's mic box where you can put your quarters, pennies, nickels, dimes. The money that's collected is sent to our missions all over the world. So we do appreciate that. And also we do stamp collecting. So if you have any stamps at home, we welcome you to bring them in. If you could just leave at least a half an inch around the envelope when you cut the stamp off. That way the stamps are collected and they're forward to uh, a stamp collector. And the money that is used for that is to pay the interpreters. Because we do have some women from our triune zone who are hearing impaired. And with that money, when they're attending meetings, with that money goes to pay the interpreters since the budget is kind of tight right now. So we do appreciate any stamps you have at home, if you could bring them in, whether they use or old stamps, use or new stamps. Just please bring them in and we welcome that. And that's it. Okay. Now, do these not look like beautiful women of God right here? I think we will say, may the Lord bless you in special ways, each and every one of you in your families, in your homes, in your work, and in your lives, to the glory of God. Amen? Amen. 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 You may slowly work your way back. Let's make sure everybody leaves safely. Okay. And we're going to close with a song here. Oh, you may stay here for the song. So I'm going to make another little prayer, and Twyla reminded me, one of my great friends in ministry... Uh, and a man who supported me in a time of difficulty, and a man who introduced me at Yankee Stadium, if you remember that. The man who introduced me was Calvin Butts, uh, pastor of Abyssinian Baptist, who became a good friend and was always a good friend uh, of this city. So he passed away just this week, and uh, I'm going to offer a brief prayer for his family. Heavenly Father, we thank you for leaders of the faith. We thank you for those who have gone before us. And I want to thank you especially today for Dr. Calvin Butts, uh, who served this area of the world with such great joy and with a real eye for justice and righteousness. He understood what it was to be a pastor and what it was to be a prophet as well. And we ask that you would bless his family as they mourn his loss, and especially that family of faith up there at Abyssinian and SUNY Old Westbury, where he served as president. May all those who were touched by him be continued to be enlivened and heartened by the sense that our destiny is to be with you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, now we're going to sing, Serve Lutheran women, one and all. Let's rise, sing it, and then we're going to walk out that door. One. Only church in the Missouri Synod with this beat.
serve the Lord. Amen. Come to the parish hall for bagels.